This is Self Work, and I'm Dr. Margaret Rutherford. At Self Work, we'll discuss psychological and emotional issues common in today's world and what to do about them. I'm Dr. Margaret, and Self Work is a podcast dedicated to you taking just a few minutes today for your own self work. Hello and welcome or welcome back to Self Work. I'm Dr. Margaret, and I have a different introduction to make today. Next month is going to sound different here on Self Work due to the fact that I have to have surgery for a benign tumor. It's a face and neck surgery. So what that means is that I may have some difficulty moving my face and mouth for a while as I heal. I'm more than lucky that the tumor is not malignant. I have a wonderful surgeon and my amazing family and family of friends have rallied around me. That includes a third kind of family. The incredible family that works with me, Christine Mathias, John Crowley, and Jody Smith. John and Christine are working together to keep self-work going smoothly during the time I need to heal and have had great ideas to make sure you, our listeners, are going to have stimulating, supportive, and caring self-work episodes during December. We'll talk more about how that's actually going to happen, but I promise you, you'll be delighted with the outcome. In fact, I'm excited to listen in to what they've created, so hold on to your hats, my friends. Of course, I'll be eager to return, but I'm not in control of when that'll happen, so I must take time off, have the surgery, have time to heal, and then come back to what I love, talking with all of you. Today, we're going to focus on the question of labels. How does the mental health world attach diagnoses or labels onto people like depression or anxiety or bipolar disorder, and how does what that person is looking for or the lens they're looking through, affect what they see? How does their own experience tend to color what a doctor or diagnosing clinician might see? Will they see depression or sadness, normal grief or an abnormal response to loss? And even in our everyday experience, are you and I incorrectly defining everyday stress and upset as mental illness? There are people who think so, and we're going to hear from them. Our listener voicemail is different today, and I was eager to answer her question. She asks if something like a name change after trauma could help with building a sense of confidence. I think that's a great question, especially fit for self-work, because it's all about what you have control over and regaining a sense of empowerment. I guess that statement suggests what my answer is going to be. Let's first hear from one of our great sponsors, Ozark Mountain Medicine, and some of the best CBD products out there. Diagnosed with degenerative disc in my back when I was in my 20s, I've long been a seeker of alternative ways to help reduce inflammation, and I can't believe that the best product I've ever found is produced here in Northwest Arkansas. Ozark Mountain Medicine, located on a small boutique farm in the Ozark Mountains under the careful watch of CBD guru Bill Morgan, is a grassroots operation which produces some of the highest quality CBD available on the market. Unlike marijuana, which contains THC, which is what makes it mood-altering, CBD isn't the same and is legal in all states. Ozark Mountain Medicine's products contain at least 16 varieties of hemp, where other CBD products may use only one. Think of it as a healing gumbo for your joint and muscle aches, and you've got the picture. What's most important to me and to you is that it works. I've been told at least three times in my life that I needed to be reassessed for back surgery. And three times I've kept walking, getting massages, and for the last three years, steadfastly using this product. You can take it orally in tincture form, or calming salves are available, which is what I prefer. The other benefits of taking it include immune support, increased relaxation, reduced anxiety, and improved sleep. So here's their fabulous offer for self-work listeners. All you have to do is use this promo link, ozarkmountainmedicine.com slash self-work, and you'll receive 10% off your order. I never suggest a product to you that I haven't used myself, and I reap this one's benefits each and every day. That code again is ozarkmountainmedicine.com slash selfwork. Sometimes the best solutions are right under your nose. So try a bit of Ozark Mountain Medicine CBD and see for yourself.
We're going to talk about diagnostic labels today and how the mental health world, its science, its leaders, and its language might be influencing us to overpathologize what's normal, meaning that you can come to believe something is sick or wrong or abnormal when actually it is normal when it's understood in its own context. But another fact that may be even more disconcerting, you can base your decisions on what you call something by the knowledge or experience or reasoning you have at hand. And that language might be misleading or limited. So, let's talk about this in detail. Bessel van der Kolk, a highly regarded trauma specialist and author of The Body Keeps the Score, talks about this very thing. And if you want to look in your show notes, I've included a very short YouTube video where he explains his views. It's really just four minutes. I think it's well worth you watching. You can either go to my website or just go to your show notes. Basically, he and I and many others believe that the role of trauma is overlooked and even ignored by many psychiatrists and mental health professionals, especially the authors of the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual that is used by psychiatry and psychology. There's no childhood trauma diagnoses listed in the DSM that are specific to children. He tried to get developmental trauma disorder into its lingo and failed. He was told it was too niche. And thus, the treatment is often not experiential and focused on the trauma. It's pharmacological. Take a pill, because what you and your child are going through is abnormal. That's what the doctor might say. Bessel van der Kolk is far from alone about what he sees are the problems and how the language of mental health is being created. In a great article talking about childhood diagnoses in HuffPost, Allison Schaefer writes, When I was a kid, the school complained that I was too fidgety and had trouble paying attention to the teacher. It was 1970, and I was given the diagnosis, ants in her pants. About the same time, my left-handed brother was having his hand thwacked with a ruler repeatedly for holding the pencil in his left hand. Writing was a behavior that was only to be done with the right hand. So you can see how much our culture has changed in these two examples. In the YouTube video, I hope you'll switch over and watch, Van der Kolk talks about how the understanding and cultural acceptance or non-acceptance of something causes us to normalize or pathologize things. Here's an example. When he went to medical school, incest was stated as rare, which it is not, and even was proposed as having positive consequences for women. Men coming home from World War I who had PTSD symptoms were blamed for lying about it, lying about what they were experiencing, and they got no treatment. Earlier, women who suffered from quote-unquote hysteria were seen as sick and ill rather than being traumatized by what were actual abuses they experienced and suffered. So, you can see how the labels we have are influenced by what already exists in our minds as normal or abnormal. What this means is that if you have been given a diagnosis of depression or anxiety or bipolar disorder or PTSD, does it really fit for you? Maybe it does. And that label has very much helped you to understand and then seek treatment and help for what's wrong. Please don't hear that what I'm saying is 100% criticism of diagnostic technique. I'm not. But Are doctors and prescribers taking the time to really understand something before they slap a diagnosis on it? Some of you may remember my interview with Sarah Fay, and I'll have the episode number in your show notes. She talked about the relief she felt after a doctor, after their initial visit, when asked what was wrong with her, said, I don't know. The vast majority of her experience had been that she was labeled something in that first visit by other practitioners. Time in the bigger picture can be so helpful to understand before labeling what you're going through as abnormal or illness. For example, let's talk about depression. Maybe you're depressed clinically, maybe you fit criteria, but maybe you're going through what's a normal response to life. If your grief is lasting longer than other people's, it doesn't mean that's an illness. If you're going through a really rough time, Maybe it's not because you can't handle life and you're anxious and you need an anti-anxiety medication, but because the circumstances are just that, really rough. 
Maybe others around you don't understand, or they have patience, or they judge, and maybe you do as well. There must be something wrong with me. Maybe there is, but maybe not. Let's talk about how only seeing one aspect of something can dramatically affect what you call it. There's an old Indian parable called The Blind Men and the Elephant that talks about just this phenomenon. It was written by Icho Hanabusa in 1888. There were once six blind men who stood by the roadside every day and begged from the people who passed. They had often heard of elephants, but they'd never seen one. For being blind, how could they? It so happened one morning that an elephant was driven down the road where they stood. When they were told that the great beast was before them, they asked the driver to let him stop so that they might see him. Of course, they could not see him with their eyes, but they thought by touching him they could learn just what kind of animal he was. The first one happened to put his hand on the elephant's side. Well, well, he said, now I know all about this beast. He's exactly like a wall. The second felt only of the elephant's tusk. My brother, he said, you're mistaken. He's not at all like a wall. He's round and smooth and sharp. He's more like a spear than anything else. The third happened to take hold of the elephant's trunk. Both of you are wrong, he said. Anybody who knows anything can see that this elephant is like a snake. The fourth reached out his arms and grasped one of the elephant's legs. Oh, how blind you are, he said. It is very plain to me that he is round and tall, like a tree. The fifth was a very tall man, and he chanced to take hold of the elephant's ear. The blindest man ought to know that this beast is not like any of the things that you name, he said. He is exactly like a huge fan. The sixth was very blind indeed, and it was some time before he could find the elephant at all. At last he seized the animal's tail. Oh, foolish fellows, he cried. You surely have lost your senses. This elephant is not like a wall or a spear or a snake or a tree. Neither is he like a fan. But any man with a particle of sense can see that he is exactly like a rope. Then the elephant moved on. And the six blind men sat by the roadside all day and quarreled. Each believed that he knew just how the animal looked, and each called the other's hard names because they did not agree with him. People who have eyes sometimes act as foolishly. Now, here's the question I ask myself. How do I know that my own perception isn't overly colored by the labels I have for something? or how I organize and see mental and emotional issues. You'll hear my answer in a minute after we hear from Athletic Greens or AG1. Our partner, AG1, has a product I use every day. I started taking Athletic Greens, frankly, because they were interested in sponsoring self-work, and I never recommend something to you without trying it first. With one scoop of AG1, whose taste is somewhere between sweet and tart to me, you'll get 75 high-quality minerals, vitamins, probiotics, adaptogens, and whole food source superfoods, which support everything from your gut to your immune system to your energy level. I love it because whether I'm home and about to go out for a walk or traveling and about to spend time with friends and family, I can start my day proactively, knowing I'm doing something for my own self-care. If you're like me, self-care can get lost for sure. In fact, Its founder, after having severe gut issues, realized he was taking over $100 a day worth of supplements, which had their own very complicated dosage routine, so he created Athletic Greens. To make it easy, and because you're a self-work listener, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is to visit athleticgreens.com slash self-work. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash self-work to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Let's talk about the DSM, for example, which Vanderkoek sarcastically calls the Bible of Psychiatry. Once again, I'm pointing to Schaefer, who cites these examples of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual's influence over our thinking about what's normal and what's not. Again, this is not to infer that mental illness doesn't exist. I know it does. But it is about the idea that if you only have certain experience or words to describe something, then that's what you call it, like the blind men. 
She says, Currently, we are in a time in history when the medical model of understanding mental illness has taken precedent. If you are outside the very narrow box of what's deemed to be acceptable or so-called normal, you are labeled abnormal. And she cites these examples. The first edition of the DSM was published in 1952 with 129 pages and 106 diagnoses. The DSM-5 is now 950 pages of roughly 350 diagnoses. Number two, temper tantrums now meet the criteria for disruptive mood dysregulation. Number three, grief now meets the criteria for major depression. Number four, infants can be diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Number five, there has been a 35-fold increase in children classified as being disabled by mental disorders between 1987 and 2007. Numbers have been increasing ever since. And here's the last one. Alan Francis, the chair of the DSM-5 task force, the psychiatrist that put together the DSM, stepped down and publicly criticized the unethical involvement of the drug companies in the process and warned of hyperinflation in diagnosis, which has proven to be true. When I read this last fact, I wanted to hear it from the man himself. So, here's an interview with Dr. Francis and what he had to say as recently as 2019. This was in the Psychiatric Times. I'm quoting Dr. Francis. I think psychiatry is among the noblest professions, but I think that it has drifted astray from best practice. It is heartbreaking to me that 600,000 of our most severely ill patients are either in jail or homeless, and that we've done so little to advocate for the community mental health centers and affordable housing that would have freed them from confinement and ended shameless neglect. I fear that too many psychiatrists are now reduced to pill-pushing with far too little time to really know their patients well and to apply the rounded biopsychosocial model that is absolutely essential to good care. That means you look at someone's biology, someone's genetics and their physical functioning, you look at their psychological functioning and their social world, the social environment that provides context for them. You look at the person holistically. We also have done far too little to educate the primary care doctors who prescribe 80% of psychiatric meds on the principles of cautious prescribing, proper indications, full consideration of risks, and the value of watchful waiting and tincture of time. I despair the diagnostic inflation that results from a too loose diagnostic system, aggressive drug company marketing, careless assessment, and insurance company pressure to rush to judgment. So what does this look like in real life? I happen to know that in a first session, a therapy session, if I don't give a diagnosis when I hand in my paperwork or my statement to insurance, they won't pay for the session. But what about in medicine? You go to your primary care doc who knows you and wants to help. And so you walk in and say, I've been divorced now six months and I still don't feel like myself. I look back and regret so much of what happened. And I feel like I'm no better off now and like a total failure. You know, it might have been the worst mistake of my life. I cry myself to sleep almost every night. And even then I toss and turn. And that doc says, well, maybe we should start you on something. And off you go. Again, don't get me wrong, I've been on medications and they've helped me. I'm not knocking medications in and of themselves. What I am saying is that there can be a rush to them. And those primary docs have looked at the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. They've looked at that definition of depression and your description of what you're going through fits. Low self-esteem, lack of sleep, depressed mood and regret. What the CBT people would call catastrophizing. You're saying it may have been the worst mistake of my life. You have emotional, mental, and physical disturbance. So it must be illness or abnormality, right? Maybe it is, but maybe it's not. Maybe they and now you are only seeing the part of the elephant you know. Now let me answer the question I asked before the break. Is my own judgment rooted in what I've experienced or what I know so far? Of course, yes. I've had to watch, for example, since writing the book on perfectly hidden depression and researching it so much that I don't see perfectly hidden depression where it isn't, that I don't stick round people into square diagnostic holes. 
Addictionologists need to be aware that not everything is an addiction. Nutritionists know their stuff, but maybe nutrition is not the foremost problem. We've got to look beyond our context. What can you do? Awareness is the best tool that we have as humans that we need time to see the whole picture. And sometimes our first instinct isn't right. Because if we have a hammer, sometimes we can see everything as needing to be hammered. What you call something, how you label something, affects how you treat it. So please, ask your doctor or clinician to take the time needed to make sure your diagnosis will be helpful and won't be an over- or under-reaction to what you're experiencing. Speak pipe message from DrMargaretRutherford.com Now, let's listen to the listener voicemail. Hi, Dr. Margaret. I've had some confusion and depression from the feelings that I do not like my name, and I've been characterized as having post-traumatic stress disorder, severe, and I'm trying to reach out to see if we can talk about more research on the fact that a name change is necessary because it builds confidence. Thank you. You know, here on Self Work, we talk a lot about what you can do about it. And as far as I'm concerned, this listener can change her name to anything she wants, if it helps her. She seems to have been through severe trauma. Again, she's been diagnosed with severe PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, some might say, well, she's just running away from her reality. I don't know enough about her story to say anything about that. I don't know. But not liking to hear her name, not feeling that she wants to be called by the same name that perhaps her perpetrator called her, or what was her name during the time when whatever trauma she experienced occurred, you know, why not? I've had a few patients change their names, and that was something they could control, that empowered them, that perhaps was a way of describing who they are now. Maybe it was a way of distancing from the past or detaching from that chapter of their lives in a way that was meaningful to them. It's okay. Now, where she might run into trouble would be with family who thought it was unnecessary or silly if they don't understand or don't try to understand why it's important. And that, of course, can happen and does happen. She also didn't say anything about this being a part of a change in gender identity, But if that's part of the equation, I definitely suggest this listener go to a therapist who's an expert in those kinds of issues to get their advice. So why not choose another name? It's a simple thing to do that hopefully might lead her to think of today as brighter and more hopeful. And I'm all for that. It's what she can do about it. I want to thank all of you for being here. I may have raised some concern at the beginning about my own medical issues. Know that, of course, I'm a little scared, but I'm also very optimistic. And I'll be back with you as soon as I can. Let's talk about how you can find me. You can always email me at AskDrMargaret at DrMargaretRutherford.com. You can read my book, Perfectly Hidden Depression, which actually is about trying to learn how to feel your deeper feelings. I want to tell you that I learned this week that I've sold 16,000 copies of the book, which for a first-time author and a very unknown author is really very good. I want to thank you for buying it and reading it and telling your friends about it. It's available wherever you buy books. You can go to my website at drmargaretrutherford.com. And you can subscribe there. You can also subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. And please leave me a review there. I can't tell you what that means when I see several of them that are crew in a month. I learn a lot, too. Let me tell you about a critical review I got. I got a review from a man in Canada that said he used to really enjoy the podcast, but that now I have increased the number of advertisements, and he doesn't like that. You know, for a long time, I didn't take advertising because I was worried about it interrupting the show. But at the same time, there are costs to this show, and I was absorbing all of those costs by myself. I want to assure you that I do not suggest that you buy things or look into buying things or try things that I don't think are really good products. There's no false advertising going on at Self Work. 
So I hope you enjoy the products that are our sponsors. They're really great products. And I'm sorry this man doesn't enjoy the podcast as much. I ask that all of you just let me know honestly how you feel, and I'll address it. And there's another way to participate with me. You can join my Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash selfwork. That's facebook.com slash groups slash selfwork. I have another thing that I'm doing that next week I'll tell you all about. It's actually a way you can hear me do therapy. And that might be something you'd enjoy. That's for next week. Thank you so much for being here. I'm honored. I know you can spend your time in lots of other ways. And I hope this week's topic has been helpful to you. Please take good care of yourself, your loved ones, and your community. I'm Dr. Margaret, and this has been Self Mark. Attaching from that chapter of their lives in a way that was meaningful to them. It's okay. Now, where she might run into trouble would be with family who thought it was unnecessary or silly if they don't understand or don't try to understand why it's important. And that, of course, can happen and does happen. She also didn't say anything about this being a part of a change in gender identity. But if that's part of the equation, I definitely suggest this listener go to a therapist who's an expert in those kinds of issues to get their advice. So why not choose another name? It's a simple thing to do that hopefully might lead her to think of today as brighter and more hopeful. And I'm all for that. It's what she can do about it. I want to thank all of you for being here. I may have raised some concern at the beginning about my own medical issues. No, That of course I'm a little scared, but I'm also very optimistic. And I'll be back with you as soon as I can. Let's talk about how you can find me. You can always email me at askdrmargaret at drmargaretrutherford.com. You can read my book, Perfectly Hidden Depression, which actually is about trying to learn how to feel your deeper feelings. I want to tell you that I learned this week that I've sold 16,000 copies of the book, which for a first-time author and a very unknown author, It's really very good. I want to thank you for buying it and reading it and telling your friends about it. It's available wherever you buy books. You can go to my website at drmargaretrutherford.com and you can subscribe there. You can also subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. And please leave me a review there. I can't tell you what that means when I see several of them that are crew in a month. I learn a lot too. Let me tell you about a critical review I got. I got a review from a man in Canada that said he used to really enjoy the podcast, but that now I have increased the number of advertisements and he doesn't like that. You know, for a long time, I didn't take advertising because I was worried about it interrupting the show. But at the same time, there are costs to this show and I was absorbing all of those costs by myself. I want to assure you that I do not suggest that you buy things or look into buying things or try things that I don't think are really good products. There's no false advertising going on at Self Work. So I hope you enjoy the products that are our sponsors. They're really great products. And I'm sorry this man doesn't enjoy the podcast as much. I ask that all of you just let me know honestly how you feel and I'll address it. And there's another way to participate with me. You can join my Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash self-work. That's facebook.com slash groups slash self-work. I have another thing that I'm doing that next week I'll tell you all about. It's actually a way you can hear me do therapy. And that might be something you'd enjoy. That's for next week. Thank you so much for being here. I'm honored. I know you can spend your time in lots of other ways. And I hope this week's topic has been helpful to you. Please take good care of yourself, your loved ones, and your community. I'm Dr. Margaret, and this has been Self Work.